So I want to talk a little bit more about the basics of statistics. Um, we talked a little bit about what a variable is, and we're going to do a little bit more with variables. Um, there are different types of variables. Remember, the variable is what you're measuring, what quantity or attribute you're measuring off of unit of observation. And there's two different types of variables. One is what is called qualitative. This is where you measure some quality. And the word measure is an interesting word because you're not really technically measuring it, but you are thinking it, we can think of it as a measurement. Measure a quality or an attribute from um, a unit of observation. Usually, qualitative or categorical variables are words. Though they can be numbers where you might be measuring something, putting somebody in order, saying that um, we have certain values or certain, uh, you could say a Likert, what we call a Likert scale, where you could actually say um, from a scale from one to 10, how much do you like this movie? So that would, that would be a way we could actually put numbers on those. Um, but they still are attached to words. Uh, pain measurements are one of those things where people say, on a scale from one to 10, what's your pain measure? The problem with those numbers is the, the numbers don't mean the same thing to you. Um, my number five is very, very different from somebody else's number five is how much pain they're in. So these numbers aren't real numbers, they're kind of unreal numbers. But when we have qualitative variables or categorical variables, we're measuring some attribute. Some examples of things like these are hair color, uh, voting preference, um, your religion, Uh, your grade, so you got an A, B, C, or D. Or F, I guess I should include S. Hopefully you don't get one of those, but. Um, the, um, your race, uh, your place value in a race. in our running race or some kind of other competition. Um, your gender. These are all different kind of examples of things that you can have. And there's more of them, of course. These are just some examples of these quanti qualitative values. The other type of variable is what we call quantitative. So quantitative is where you measure, and this time you can actually think of it as really measuring something. Measure. Um, a value from the unit of observation. These are usually numbers. So some examples of these would be your height, your age, if you're actually giving your actual age, um, your um, IQ, which people really don't use IQ anymore, but it's there in case you want to use it. You could look at your, um, uh, your uh, salary, the temperature, the time of day, the year, the distance, the length, 
and again, this can go on for a really long time. We're not going to write them all down, but these are just some other examples of different kinds of quantitative. These will have numbers. Then we can talk about something called the measurement scale. So nominal is the most basic measurement scale. We usually start with that one. And we're going to start with nominal. And what nominal means is um, there's no there's no order. There's just an, a value. And the value isn't a number. So your data would be just a value that has no order. There's no order. Um, you can't add these values. or subtract. They're just, it's just there. It's just kind of a, a name basically. Some examples of these are things like race, gender, um, your, uh, your hair color, they're just attributes of people. There's nothing more to it. It's just there. The next one up, and actually, the reason I say next one up is because ordinal are actually nominal with an added thing. So these are basically nominal data with order involved, or with order being important or being used. So examples of these would be things like, and there's not a lot of these, so it's hard to come up with these, but small, medium, large. That would be an order. We can put them in some kind of order. Your grades, A, B, C, D, F. There's definitely an order to those grades. Um, your place value in a race. If you're first, second, or third. Your school ranking. So again, there's still no numbers here per se, but you can put an order to them. And again, there's not a lot of these. It's a little bit harder to come up with these. The next one up is what we call interval. An interval is actually where we finally get numbers. So this is where we actually have, basically you can think of it as ordinal data, but it has numbers. And you can actually subtract the numbers. So interval data is where you have data that is numbers. And the subtraction makes sense. So some examples of this, and again, there's not a lot of these either. Some examples of these are things like um, time on a clock. I can talk about being two o'clock and I can talk about it being five o'clock and I can say that five o'clock is three hours later than two o'clock. That makes sense to talk about that. Uh, temperature. I can talk about the fact that this morning it was um, 15 degrees Celsius, this afternoon it was 30 degrees Celsius, and I can talk about it's 15 degrees warmer in the afternoon than it was in the morning. Um, I can, so I can talk about those things, and so these are examples of what we would call interval data. Now there is one more above interval, and that's what's called ratio, and that's why I haven't given a lot of examples that you would think, oh, that would be ratio, because there's an added thing that ratio has. And ratio is still interval data, but the ratio of values makes sense. So what we mean by that is you can say that something is twice as much as something else. It makes sense to say I make twice as much money as some other person 
or it makes sense to say that that distance is twice as far as a different distance. Or it makes sense to say that that took twice as long as something else took. What all of these examples have is what we call an absolute zero. And an absolute zero means that it's the absence, a zero value means no measurement. And so you have to ask yourself, does the data have an absolute zero? And if it does, then it would be ratio. So examples of this are distance, salary, amount of money I have in my checking account. And the reason I like to bring that one up is a lot of people think, oh, well, if there's an absolute zero, you can have negatives. But I can have a negative in my checking account. It means I've overdrawn. But zero in my checking account means I have no money in there. So we can have negatives, but the zero is what's important. The zero means the absence of it. So amount of money in checking account would be a good example. And this is why time on a clock doesn't, isn't ratio because time on a clock is zero time is midnight. And saying something is happening at two o'clock in the afternoon and something happens at four in the afternoon, it's not like the four in the afternoon is twice anything of the two in the afternoon. Same with zero with temperature, why is temperature's interval and not ratio, is zero degrees Celsius just means water is frozen. It doesn't mean anything more than this, the water freezes. Whereas, um, and zero degrees Fahrenheit means absolutely nothing except that it's really, really cold. So those zeros don't mean anything in these two examples, and that's why they're called interval. Whereas here, these things, the zero means something. And that's what those different values are. 